The Glass Forest In the heart of a lush, green valley lay the small village of Eldoria, a place untouched by the hustle and bustle of modern cities. Its quaint cottages, with their thatched roofs and flower-filled gardens, seemed almost suspended in time, each one a storybook illustration brought to life. One evening, as twilight draped its violet cloak over the village, Lila sat curled up by the fireplace, hanging on her grandmother's every word. Myra's voice, textured with the wisdom of age, floated through the room like a gentle breeze. Beyond the rolling hills and the murmur of the creek, where the shadows grow long and the foxgloves stand tall, there lies the glass forest. Mira began, her eyes glinting with a spark of the mystic. It is said that everything in that forest, from the tallest oak to the smallest pebble, Lila's imagination painted vivid images of glittering trees and crystal-clear animals frolicking under a sun that turned the whole forest into a kaleidoscope of colors. But why is it called the glass forest, Grandma? Lila asked, her voice tinged with the awe of a mind roaming distant lands. Mira smiled, placing another log into the fireplace. The flames danced higher, casting playful shadows on the walls. Because my dear, just like glass, the forest reflects the truth of our hearts and the essence of our world. Changes with our ways, if we cherish and protect our world. Lila pondered this, her brows knitting together in thought. Has anyone ever seen it? Does it really exist? She questioned, her mind alive with possibilities. No one in the village has seen it, not for many generations. Some say it's just a legend, a tale to inspire children to look after the world around them. But there are those who believe it's real, hidden somewhere, waiting for someone with a true heart to rediscover it," Mira explained. That night, after Mira had said goodnight and the last embers in the fireplace grew dim, Lila lay in her bed, staring out the window at the starlit sky. The story of the glass forest filled her dreams, a sparkling world so vivid yet so out of reach. Determined, Lila made a silent vow as sleep overtook her. She would find the glass forest, not just to prove its existence, but to see for herself the reflection of a world she knew could be better, through the eyes of one who cared deeply. As dawn broke, casting a golden glow over Eldoria, Lila's adventure was already beginning to take shape in her eager mind. Today, she would start looking for any sign, any path that might lead her to the legendary glass forest. Her journey to discover the heart of the world was about to begin, and with it, the story of a young girl who dared to dream and dared to believe in the legends of old. The Hidden Path The morning after her conversation with her grandmother, Lila awoke with the first rays of sunlight that slipped through her window, painting her room in hues of gold and amber. The stories of the glass forest echoed in her mind, filling her with a restless energy. Today was the day she would start her quest to find the fabled forest. After a quick breakfast of oatmeal and berries, Lila told her grandmother she was going to explore the woods around the village. Mira, understanding the spirit of adventure in Lila's eyes, gave her a small, knowing smile and a gentle warning. Remember Lila, not all those who wander are lost, but it's wise to keep one's path in sight, she said handing her a small woven basket for berries or perhaps for collecting bits of wonder. Lila hugged her grandmother and stepped out into the crisp morning air, her heart light with excitement. She made her way past the familiar houses and into the meadow that lay on the outskirts of Eldoria. The meadow was a sea of wildflowers, swaying gently in the breeze, buzzing with bees and the songs of morning birds. She ventured further than she had ever gone before, drawn by a mixture of courage and curiosity. As she reached the edge of the meadow where the grass grew wild and tall, her eyes caught a glimpse of something unusual. There, hidden behind thick brambles and undergrowth, was a narrow, shimmering path. It was as if the very earth had been sprinkled with stardust. Lila felt a tug in her chest, an instinct that this was the path her grandmother's tales had whispered of. With a deep breath, Lila pushed through the brambles, her hands shielding her face from the thorns. As she stepped onto the path, the air seemed to change. The usual sounds of the woods, the chirping of birds and the rustling of leaves, faded into a hushed silence, 
as if the forest itself was holding its breath. The path was unlike anything Lila had ever seen. The dirt sparkled with a faint, glassy sheen, and every footstep seemed to resonate with a soft, musical chime. The trees here were taller, their bark smooth and reflective, casting back her image as she passed. She felt as though she were walking through a world crafted from dreams. As the path wound deeper into the woods, the light dimmed, filtered through the dense canopy above. Lila's basket soon filled with unusual stones that gleamed like gems and fallen branches that sparkled with a crystal-like glaze. Each item was a marvel unique and beautifully mysterious. Suddenly, the path opened into a clearing where the light poured down like liquid gold. In the center stood a majestic oak tree, its trunk and leaves shimmering as if made of finely blown glass. Underneath the tree, in a bed of soft moss, lay a creature Lila could scarcely believe. It was a small fox, but unlike any fox she had known, its fur glimmered with a thousand colors, reflecting the light of the clearing like a prism. The Hidden Path 2 As Lila approached, the fox awoke and stared at her with eyes clear as the sky. It was not afraid. Instead, it seemed to appraise her, its gaze piercing yet gentle. After a moment, the fox stood and trotted off, pausing to look back at Lila as if to say, follow. Lila hesitated only for a heartbeat before following the fox. It led her through the clearing and into yet another part of the forest where the trees danced with colors she had never imagined trees could wear. The path twisted and turned, each bend bringing a new wonder, urging her deeper into the magic of the glass forest. She didn't know how long she walked or how far. Time seemed to bend around her, the forest's enchantment growing with every step. All she knew was that she was meant to be here, on this hidden path, uncovering the secrets that had waited for her since the stories of her childhood. And deep within, as the shadows grew longer and the air cooler, Lila felt the first stirrings of change, not just in the world around her but within herself. The journey through the glass forest was just beginning, and it promised to reveal more than she could have ever imagined. A World of Glass Lila followed the fox as it deftly navigated the twisting, glass-covered path. The deeper they went, the more the forest transformed around her. Trees taller than any she'd seen in Eldoria stood sentinel, their trunks and leaves crafted from translucent glass, casting kaleidoscopic shadows on the forest floor. It was as if she had stepped into another world, one suspended between reality and dream. The fox led her to a large clearing, where the sun hit the glass foliage, creating a dazzling display of light that danced across the ground in a spectrum of colors. At the center of this clearing stood an enormous ancient tree, its branches sprawling wide into the sky, shimmering with a thousand hues. It felt alive, humming with a gentle rhythmic pulse that resonated beneath her fingertips. Suddenly, the air around her began to shimmer, and a voice clear and melodious filled the clearing. Welcome, Lila of Eldoria, it said, seeming to emanate from the tree itself. Startled, Lila stepped back. Who are you? she asked, her voice a mix of wonder and fear. I am Alor, the guardian of the glass forest, the voice replied. The glass leaves rustled as if affirming his presence, and the air around the tree swirled with a soft glow. You have come far, child, driven by the purity of your quest. It is rare that a human steps foot here, and even rarer still that they see the forest as you do. Lila's heart raced with excitement and a touch of nervousness. Why is this place made of glass? And why can I see it? She asked. Alor's voice softened. Long ago, the glass forest was born out of the Earth's desire to show its bond with humanity. The glass you see reflects the health of our planet, clear and vibrant when well cared for, dull and fragile when neglected. You see it because you believe in the importance of harmony between nature and your kind. That belief, that care, makes you different, Lila. Embarrassed yet proud, Lila looked around, taking in the beauty and fragility of her surroundings. How can I help? What can I do to protect this place? She asked eagerly. The forest needs a champion, 
someone to remind others of their connection to the world. The neglect and forgetfulness of your kind threaten to dim its brilliance, Alor explained. By caring for your environment, by teaching others to respect and cherish it, you can restore the forest's glow. But I'm just a girl, Lila protested gently. How can I make everyone understand? Every great change starts with a single action, Lila. Share what you see, what you feel here, and let your actions inspire others, Alor encouraged. The forest chose you because of your spirit. Believe in yourself as we believe in you. Motivated by Alor's words, Lila nodded. I will do my best, she promised, determination setting in her young features. Carry this with you, Alor said, and from a branch, a small leaf made of glass drifted down, glowing faintly. Lila caught it gently. It was surprisingly warm, and it thrummed with the same pulse as the tree. This leaf is now part of you and you, part of the forest. It will guide you and remind you of your purpose, Alor told her. With the glass leaf secure in her pocket, Lila thanked Alor and turned to leave the clearing. The fox, which had been quietly observing, now stood and led her back to the path. As she walked away, the forest seemed to watch her, the light from the glass leaves twinkling like stars in the daylight. Lila knew she was no longer just a girl from Eldoria. She was a guardian in her own right, ready to start her journey towards making a difference in the world, one small step at a time. Alor the Guardian As Lila made her way back through the forest, the glass leaf in her pocket felt like a living connection to the glass forest, pulsating softly with warmth. With each step, she felt a surge of determination. She was no longer just an explorer. She had a mission, a purpose bestowed upon her by the forest itself. The journey back seemed different, almost as if the forest acknowledged her new role. The path under her feet sparkled a little brighter, and the trees swayed gently, as if nodding in approval. The fox, ever silent, led her through familiar yet transformed surroundings, its presence a comforting guide. Upon reaching the edge of the clearing where she had first met Alor, the guardian of the forest, Lila paused. The air seemed to shimmer, and the atmosphere thickened with a sense of expectancy. She turned around, half expecting to see Alor materialize before her. Alor! She called softly into the still air. Are you here? The leaves rustled and the light shifted, coalescing into the form of the majestic elk once again. Alor's antlers glistened under the canopy, catching the light with every move, reflecting the myriad colors of the forest. I am always here, Lila. Alor's voice resonated clear and melodious as before. The forest is part of me as I am part of it. What weighs on your mind, young guardian? Lila stepped forward, her resolve strengthening. I want to learn. I need to know how to protect this place and how to fulfill my promise to you in the forest, she declared. Alo regarded her with his deep, wise eyes. To protect the glass forest, you must understand it, he began. This forest is a mirror of the world beyond, reflecting its beauty and its pain. When the balance of nature is upheld, the forest shines. When it is broken, the forest suffers. How do I restore the balance? Lila asked, eager to begin her task. Start by understanding the connection between all living things. Teach others to see this connection, Alor advised. The change must come not just from you, but from many. It begins with appreciation and respect for nature. Lila nodded, absorbing every word. And the glass leaf? she inquired, touching the pocket where it lay. That leaf is your bond with the forest, Alor explained. It will guide you when you are uncertain and remind you of your commitment. It will glow brighter as the forest heals. Alor walked closer, lowering his head to her level. But remember, the journey is yours to make. The path you forge will affect not only the glass forest, but also the world from which you come. With those final words, Alor stepped back, his form beginning to dissolve into the light, merging once again with the forest. I will be watching, Lila. Believe in yourself as we believe in you. 
As Allor's image faded, Lila felt a profound sense of responsibility settle over her. She was no longer just a villager of Eldoria. She was a guardian tasked with an essential role. With a deep breath, she turned and followed the fox back to the boundary of the glass forest, where the real world awaited. Each step took her closer to her village, to her grandmother, and to the start of her mission. As the glassy sheen of the forest path gave way to the dirt road leading into Eldoria, Lila felt a renewed sense of purpose. She knew the task ahead was daunting, but she was ready to face it head-on, armed with the knowledge and magic of the glass forest. Her journey to change the world one small step at a time was just beginning. The Heart of the Glass Lila returned to Eldoria with the glass leaf tucked safely in her pocket, its warmth a constant reminder of her newfound purpose. As she walked through the village, everything seemed the same as she left it, yet she saw it all with new eyes. The rolling fields, the bustling marketplace, even the familiar faces of her neighbors, all were parts of a larger world that she now felt deeply connected to. Upon reaching her home, she found her grandmother Mira in the garden, tending to the herbs and flowers with gentle care. Mira looked up, sensing a change in Lila. You've returned with more than you left with, Mira observed, wiping her hands on her apron as she stood to greet her granddaughter. Lila nodded, feeling the weight of her journey. I've been to the glass forest, Grandma. It's real and it's beautiful, she said, her voice a mixture of awe and determination. Myra's eyes widened, a mix of surprise and pride lighting up her features. And what did you learn there, my dear? Lila took a moment to gather her thoughts, then spoke of Alor, the guardian elk, and the lessons he imparted about the interconnectedness of all life and the reflective nature of the forest. She explained how the forest's health was a mirror to their own world's treatment of nature. Mira listened intently, her expression turning thoughtful. Then it seems we have much work to do, she concluded, her tone resolute. And it starts with helping others see what you have seen. The next day, Lila set about her mission with her grandmother's guidance. They organized a meeting at the town hall, inviting all villagers to attend. Lila felt a flutter of nervousness as she prepared to speak in front of her community, but the warm presence of the glass leaf in her pocket steadied her resolve. The town hall was filled with curious faces as Lila took the stage. She began by sharing her adventure, describing the beauty of the glass forest and the urgent message she received from Alor. Her vivid descriptions captured the villagers' imaginations, and her sincere plea for change touched their hearts. We are all guardians of our own world, Lila declared, her voice growing confident. Just as the glass forest reflects the health of its environment, so does our village reflect our respect and care for nature. Inspired by her words, the community agreed to start a series of initiatives. The first was a village-wide cleanup day, followed by the planting of a community garden. Lila and Mira led workshops on recycling and sustainable living, educating their neighbors on simple ways to reduce waste and conserve resources. As the weeks turned into months, the changes became evident. Streets were cleaner, gardens flourished, and a new sense of community pride swelled in Eldoria. Lila watched as her village transformed, and with each positive change, she felt the glass leaf's warmth grow, its glow a gentle, encouraging pulse. One evening, as Lila walked by the edge of the village where the path to the glass forest began, she noticed something remarkable. The path, once faint and shimmering only slightly, now glowed steadily, its light stronger and more inviting. A smile spread across Lila's face as she realized the forest was responding to their efforts, its vitality a reflection of their own. Filled with renewed purpose and hope, Lila knew this was only the beginning. The journey to heal their world was long, but it was possible. With each step they took, the reflection in the glass forest would grow brighter, a testament to their love and care for the world they all shared. Seeds of Change in the weeks that followed, Lila's life was a whirlwind of activity. With her grandmother Myra's help, 
she had become a beacon of environmental consciousness in Eldoria. Their initiatives had sparked a new sense of purpose throughout the village, transforming daily routines and perspectives on nature and conservation. Lila started her mornings early, tending to the community garden that now thrived at the village's edge. It was a patchwork of lush greenery, with rows of vegetables and herbs alongside vibrant flowers that attracted bees and butterflies. The garden had become a gathering place, where villagers of all ages learned about sustainable practices and shared in the fruits of their labor. One sunny morning as Lila watered the tomato plants, her friend Jonas approached, his arms laden with compost materials. This has really taken off, hasn't it? He remarked, looking around at the busy plots where children played and adults worked. It has, Lila replied, a smile spreading across her face, and it's all starting to make a difference, not just here, but everywhere. The forest, Jonas guessed, knowing Lila's deep connection to the mystical woods. Yes, the glass forest is responding, the path glows brighter each night. I think it's a sign that we're on the right track, Lila said, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Inspired by the success of the garden, Lila organized weekly workshops in the town hall. Topics ranged from recycling and waste reduction to rainwater harvesting and energy conservation. The workshops were well attended, with lively discussions and enthusiastic participation that often spilled over into community action. One workshop led to the establishment of a recycling program, which the local schoolchildren embraced wholeheartedly. They created colorful posters and went door to door, educating their neighbors about the importance of recycling and how it could help both their village and the glass forest. As the village embraced these new practices, news of their efforts spread to neighboring villages. Lila was invited to speak at other community gatherings, sharing her story of the glass forest and the reflective nature of their actions upon the world. Her message was simple yet powerful. Each of us holds the power to make a difference. Like the glass forest, our world reflects what we put into it. By caring for our environment, we care for ourselves and each other. The impact of her words was profound, igniting a regional movement towards sustainability. The changes initiated by Lila and the people of Eldoria were creating ripples reaching farther than she had ever imagined. Back in Eldoria, the positive transformations were visible everywhere. Streets were cleaner, wildlife was more abundant, and the air felt fresher. The village had become a model of environmental stewardship, and the pride in their collective efforts was palpable. One evening, as the sun set painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, Lila walked to the edge of the village where the path to the glass forest began. The path now shone with a steady, silvery glow, beckoning her. She followed it a little way, stopping at the border where the real world met the mystical. As she stood there, the glass leaf in her pocket grew warm, its glow pulsating gently. Lila took it out and watched as it shimmered in the twilight, a tangible symbol of the bond between her actions and the health of the glass forest. With a deep sense of satisfaction and renewed determination, Lila knew that this was just the beginning. There were more villages to inspire, more changes to foster. The seeds of change she and her village had planted were growing, and their effects would continue to spread, nourishing the earth just as the earth nourished them. Return to Eldoria. The soft glow of dawn bathed Eldoria in a gentle light as Lila made her way through the village. It had been a year since she first set out to find the glass forest, and what a year it had been. The village had transformed, and with each step, Lila saw the fruits of their labor. The lush community garden, the recycling bins at every corner, and the solar panels gleaming on rooftops. But today was special. Today, Lila and her grandmother, Mira, were preparing for the first Eldoria Environmental Festival, a celebration of their achievements and a chance to share their journey with a wider audience. Booths line the main street, each representing a different aspect of environmental consciousness, from beekeeping and composting to renewable energy. As the villagers gathered, the festival buzzed with excitement and activity. Children darted between stands, 
their laughter mingling with the music that filled the air. Lila, standing at the entrance with a welcome banner, felt a swell of pride. Mira joined her, carrying a basket of glass leaves similar to the one Alor had given Lila. These will be our gifts to the visitors, Mira explained, her eyes twinkling. Each leaf represents a promise to care for our world, just as you have. Throughout the day, Lila shared her story with anyone who would listen. She spoke of the glass forest and its guardian, Alor, of the forest's beauty and fragility, and how it reflected the health of their own environment. Her tale captivated the audience, drawing more people into the discussion about sustainability. As the festival drew to a close, the setting sun painted the sky in shades of orange and pink, casting a warm glow over the village. Lila took the stage once more, this time to address the entire gathering. Today we celebrate not only what we have achieved in Eldoria, but also what we hope to inspire in others. Lila began, her voice steady and clear. The changes we've made here are just the beginning. Each of us carries the potential to make a difference, to reflect the best of ourselves in the world around us. She held up a glass leaf, letting the light catch its surface. This leaf is a symbol of that potential. Let it remind us that we are all guardians of our beautiful planet, and it is up to us to nurture and protect it. The crowd erupted in applause moved by her words. People came forward to receive their glass leaves, each making a personal commitment to environmental stewardship. As night fell and the first stars appeared in the sky, Lila walked to the edge of the village, where the path to the glass forest began. The path now radiated a bright, steady light, a beacon of the health of the forest and a reflection of their commitment. Touching the glass leaf around her neck, Lila felt a profound connection to the forest, to Alor, and to the larger world beyond. She knew the journey was far from over. There would be challenges ahead, but she was ready. A brighter path. As the festive spirit of the environmental festival faded into the quiet night, the impact of the day's events continued to resonate through Eldoria. The village, now a beacon of sustainability, had ignited a spark that reached beyond its borders. Lila's story and the visual transformation of Eldoria inspired neighboring communities to seek guidance on their own environmental projects. A few weeks after the festival, Lila organized a series of workshops aimed at sharing Eldoria's successful strategies with these communities. The workshops covered various topics, from setting up community gardens and initiating waste reduction programs to implementing renewable energy sources. The response was overwhelmingly positive, and Lila found herself at the heart of a growing movement. One crisp morning, as Autumn painted the village in shades of gold and red, a delegation from a nearby town visited Eldoria. They were eager to see the changes firsthand and learn from Lila and the other villagers. As they toured the community garden, the recycling center, and the newly installed solar panels, their curiosity turned into admiration and motivation. Lila walked with them, sharing insights and anecdotes. It all starts with small steps, she explained, plucking a ripe tomato from a vine and handing it to a young visitor. Each action, no matter how small, contributes to a larger change. The visitors were particularly impressed by the glass leaves that every villager wore, a symbol of their commitment. Mira, ever the gracious host, held a small workshop on how to create these leaves emphasizing the importance of symbols in uniting and motivating a community. As the day wound down, the delegation left, filled with ideas and a sense of purpose. Lila felt a surge of pride, not just in what they had achieved in Eldoria, but in the potential for change they had sparked elsewhere. Encouraged by this success, Lila decided to expand her efforts. She reached out to environmental groups and local governments, sharing her story and the lessons Eldoria had learned. Soon, her initiative gained media attention, and she was invited to speak at regional conferences about community-led environmental action. With each presentation and workshop, Lila refined her message and strategies, becoming a confident speaker and a knowledgeable advocate for sustainable living. Her passion and sincerity touched many, drawing more supporters to the cause. 
Back in Eldoria, the villagers continued their environmental practices, each new project reinforcing their commitment to a sustainable lifestyle. The village became a model, visited frequently by journalists, researchers, and policymakers interested in replicating its success. One evening, as the sun set over a newly inaugurated wind turbine on the village outskirts, Lila met with her grandmother at their favorite spot by the old oak tree. They watched as the leaves turned brilliant shades of orange and red in the fading light, a mirror of the changing seasons. As they sat, the glass leaf around Lila's neck glowed softly, reflecting the last rays of the sun. It was a reminder of the glass forest, still thriving, still reflecting the health of the world around it. Guardians of Tomorrow Inside the town hall, now adorned with recycled decorations and LED fairy lights, Lila organized a series of green winter workshops. These workshops taught villagers how to make eco-friendly gifts, wrap presents with reusable materials, and prepare holiday meals using locally sourced ingredients. One crisp evening, as Lila was setting up for a workshop, she noticed a group of children gathered around a table, their eyes wide with excitement. They were learning to make bird feeders from old pine cones, peanut butter, and bird seeds. A simple project, but one that filled the room with laughter and joy. As she watched them, an elderly man approached her. He was Mr. Hansen, a longtime resident known for his skeptical views on change. Lila greeted him warmly, curious about what brought him here. I have to admit, I wasn't sure about all this at first, Mr. Hansen said, gesturing around the room. But seeing all this, seeing the kids and everyone coming together, it's something special. You've brought us all together, Lila, in ways I never imagined. Lila smiled, touched by his words. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. It's all of us together that make this work. We're all guardians of our home, aren't we? He nodded, his eyes reflecting a newfound respect. Indeed we are, and it seems we're in good hands with you leading us. The holiday season culminated in a community feast held in the village square, which was now a model of sustainability. Tables laden with organic produce from the community garden, homemade bread, and other local delicacies stretched across the square. Solar-powered lights twinkled above, casting a soft glow on the gathered crowd. As everyone sat down to eat, Lila stood to address the community. Her heart was full as she looked out over the faces of her friends, family, and neighbors, her fellow guardians. Tonight, we celebrate not just the season but what we've built together. This feast, this gathering, it's a testament to what we can achieve when we commit to protecting our planet, she said. Let's continue to be the guardians not just of Eldoria, but of the world beyond. Let's teach others what we've learned and spread this message far and wide. The applause was heartfelt, and the feast went on into the night, filled with stories, laughter, and plans for the future. As the celebrations wound down, Lila took a quiet moment to walk alone to the edge of the village, where the path to the glass forest shimmered under the starlit sky. The forest was more vibrant than ever, its glass trees sparkling like never before, a clear reflection of the health and happiness of Eldoria. Lila reached into her pocket and felt the glass leaf, still warm, still pulsing with life. She knew that their efforts were making a difference, not just in their own lives but in the life of the forest and in the balance of the natural world. Looking up at the stars, Lila made a silent vow to continue her work to spread the seeds of sustainability wherever she could. She was no longer just a girl from a small village, she was a guardian of the earth, and her journey was just beginning. The glass forest had shown her the way, and she would follow it wherever it might lead. Echoes of Glass Lila had begun to organize an annual sustainability symposium, inviting experts, activists and community leaders from various regions to share ideas and innovations. The event was to be hosted in Eldoria, transforming the village into a hub of environmental discourse and action. As the symposium drew near, Lila worked tirelessly, coordinating with speakers and setting up venues. The whole village was involved, from preparing accommodations to planning menus that showcased local, sustainable cuisine. 
The day of the symposium arrived bright and clear. Delegates from various backgrounds gathered, buzzing with anticipation and the spirit of collaboration. The opening ceremony took place in the town square, where Lila stood on a small stage, the glass forest visible in the distance, its shimmering essence a beacon to all. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow guardians of our planet, Lila began, her voice resonant and sure, we are gathered here not just to discuss but to catalyze change. Each of us carries the potential to transform our communities and by extension, the world. The symposium featured workshops and panel discussions on cutting edge sustainable technologies, community empowerment, and strategies to combat climate change. Lila led a special session on the role of storytelling in environmental education, sharing how the tale of the glass forest had galvanized Eldoria. The event culminated in a pledge ceremony where attendees committed to specific environmental actions they would undertake in their communities. Lila, inspired by the collective commitment, felt a profound connection to the network of changemakers she was now a part of. As the symposium concluded, the participants left Eldoria carrying with them glass leaves, similar to Lila's, symbolizing their commitment to the environment. The leaves, crafted by Eldoria's artisans, were infused with materials from the glass forest, ensuring that a part of its magic and message would spread across the globe. In the weeks that followed, Lila received messages from many attendees, sharing updates on the initiatives they had started. From urban gardens flourishing in rooftops to educational programs teaching children about biodiversity, the seeds planted during the symposium were sprouting in diverse and fertile grounds. As summer approached, Lila often visited the glass forest, walking the now familiar path to reflect and find peace. The forest, in turn, continued to thrive, its brilliance a reflection of the positive changes occurring far and wide. One evening, as she sat beneath the towering glass trees, Lila thought about the journey that had started with a single step into the unknown. The challenges had been many, but the rewards, seeing her world transform, influencing others to act, and knowing she was part of a larger cause, were immeasurable. With the setting sun casting long shadows through the glass foliage, Lila felt a deep sense of gratitude and purpose. The journey was far from over. It might never be, but she was ready for whatever came next, armed with the knowledge that even the smallest actions could create ripples that turned into waves of change. As she stood and made her way back to the village, the glass leaf around her neck glowed softly, a silent affirmation of the enduring bond between her, the glass forest, and the world they were all part of. The echo of glass of possibilities and promises would resonate for generations to come. To help us do more stories like this, press the like button, subscribe to the channel and share the link with your friends and family. Thanks again and see you soon. We appreciate your support.